yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in human vesture, in the body and the blood, he will give to His own self for heavenly food. Bright dawn, bright the host of heaven spreads his standard on the way. As the light of the mighty descended from the realms of heaven. Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship on this Sunday morning, May 10th. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. As we call ourselves to worship this morning, we do have a few announcements for you. First, whether you are joining us via Zoom or Facebook or YouTube, we are happy you are here. Whether you are nearby or from far away, we welcome you into this worship service today. If you are joining us and would like to follow along with a bulletin, you can find that on the church website on the homepage at vintonpresbyterian.org. There in the top middle of the page, you'll see a yellow button. Click there and you'll have a document that you can download to view or to print double-sided on 8.5 by 11 paper. As you join us for this morning, we also welcome you to participate as you feel comfortable in prayers that are unison and responsive, and those times when we have moments of silence. A few housekeeping items for today. If you are a member of the church who had your picture taken for the church directory this past fall, we have received the church directories. We've actually had them for a little bit, but there was an error in the printing in that the company printed the wrong style directory and left out about 30 community pages. Unfortunately, while we were in the process of getting that fixed, LifeTouch did close their offices until midsummer. Being a business that is based solely on meeting with people and taking their pictures, they were unable to continue to do their current work with the COVID-19 restrictions. So instead of waiting for them to reopen their offices and their printing, we are going to distribute the directories as we receive them. Our youth group has offered to do that. They'll be going out in sibling pairs this coming week to visit you in your home. They'll give you a call before they arrive, and then they will uh, bring the directory to your door. They'll leave it either on your doorstep or hang it on your door handle, ring the bell, and then they'll step back so that you don't have to worry about uh, close proximity. At that same time, if you would like to give a special Mother's Day to a mother in your life, 
or if you would like to give a graduation message to one of one or more of this year's graduating seniors, they will be happy to record a video from you from about a 10 foot distance. So you can stay at your door. They will be far enough away that we don't have to worry about the spread of germs. And we will get that message up on our video for the next couple of weeks. Next, the church office hours are uh, back to their normal times, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 8.30 to 12.30, and Wednesdays, 1 to 5 p.m. The door of the office is still locked, but you can reach Mary by telephone or email during that time. And if there are items that you need to pick up or drop off, we can work with you to coordinate that. If you are a member of our session, we are looking to have a session meeting this upcoming week. So please watch your regular mail and your email for further announcements about this. A couple of thank yous this morning to people who are providing music for us. Thank you to Angie and Sage Holmes and to Marjorie Thurkettle. There is in the announcements in our bulletin for this morning, a couple opportunities for card writing. First is a 94th birthday card shower for Martha Lundberg who turns 94 later on this month. And also, if you would like to send condolences, there is information about how to send condolences to the family of Clarice Lilja and the family of Jim Tippett, that is the father of Ron Tippett. Jim died earlier this week. With that, let us, friends, join our hearts and minds as we begin today's service. Let us sing of the mercies that God has shown us. We sing and speak and pray of God's wondrous deeds. Let us, along with all the heavens, praise the wonders of God. Who compares to the Lord? The heavens are yours, O God, and the earth and all that is in it. We are your people, O Lord, and you are our God. As we come into our time of confession today, let us call upon our God who loves us with an everlasting love. Holy, eternal God, there is no distinction between us, for we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. We have not always kept your words in our hearts and minds. Forgive us, we pray, and give us the gift of your grace, that we may be made right through our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Take heart, brothers and sisters, for our God is full of righteousness and justice. God's abundance in goodness and mercy is for those who take refuge in God. This is the good news, that in Christ Jesus we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, kids. It's time for the children's conversation, and today I want to introduce you to someone. This is Chevy. Say hi, Chevy. Can you say hi? Apparently, she's not saying hi today. You know, one of the best ways I think that we can know about God and learn about God is looking at all the amazing things in creation. And of course, I like to think that one of the things that we see the most in creation where we see God is with our plants and animals. This is Chevy and she lives at our house and we think she is really special. You can see the patterns in her fur and she has her own personality and she is mad at the moment because she has her own attitude about things. God makes all of these amazing things in the world. And when we go outside, we can see them all around us. Do any of you grow a garden at your house? Or this time of year, do any of you go mushroom picking and mushroom hunting? 
Well, this morning I went on a little hunt. It wasn't mushroom hunting, but I went out into my garden to see what had come up out of the soil that I could show you. Because when plants start growing in the spring, we can see God's work in action. I think that is so cool. So here's some of the things I found this morning. Do any of you recognize this leaf right here? This is a leaf of romaine lettuce that is coming up in the garden. This is a piece of basil. This is some oregano. Ooh, this is a favorite. Cilantro. Rosemary, I have lots of rosemary. If anyone wants rosemary, I will bring it to your house. And what else? Oh, and some mint. I think this is the one they call chocolate mint. What all of these have in common is that they are all edible and they all come up from seed, which means that um, year to year when the sun comes out and the earth warms up, the seeds start to grow and these amazing things start to show up in our garden. And since we can eat them all, it's a sign that God is providing for us. Um, wonderful things that we can eat as well as pets in our house and the mushrooms that we go hunting for. Sometimes it's hard to see God in the world, but all around us are plants and animals, even the very sun that shines upon us are signs that God cares for us. And I think that is really cool. So this week, I encourage you to go outside and find something that reminds you of God's creation. Something that reminds you that when we look at all around us, we can see the awesome things that God's doing. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next week. Thanks, bye. Our second scripture for reading for this morning comes from the Psalms, today reading in Psalm 89, verses 1 through 9 and 11 through 16. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. 
You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God feared in the council of the holy ones? great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord, your faithfulness surrounds us. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. The heavens are yours, and the earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. The north and the south, you created them. Tabor and Hermon joyously praise your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand. High is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long, and they extol your righteousness. So ends the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we enter into the second week in May, it feels like the weather is finally starting to warm up. The trees are starting to leaf out. We have some trees that are blossoming and flowers that are starting to come out of the ground. It seems like this was a late late spring. The strange weather that we had from winter continued into the months of March and April, and here we are in May with the gardens just getting into the ground. As the weather warms up, of course, it seems like our weeks of social distancing are a bit more tolerable since we are able to sit outside more and work in the garden and walk outside, but at the same time, we recognize that while statewide bans and restrictions are being lifted, it's not yet time for us to resume activities as normal. From time to time in the human experience, we as humanity have these times where everything changes. In school, in high school, in middle school, and into college, we always hear about the Renaissance period where everything changed. We came out of the time, the medieval times, the uh, this sort of a dark period into this time of enlightenment that we call it. Um, you know, it's like there was a cloud before that happened and all of a sudden, oh, here we go. Things are new and exciting. And it wasn't quite like that, but we do understand the sentiment that there are these moments in human history where things simply are never going to be like they were before. And where we're at right now in this time of COVID-19 and um, learning phrases like social distancing and self-quarantine, um, we know that things are unusual, that things are changing. And we have no idea yet what the end result is going to be. Only time will tell that. But for some people, we know that life is going to go back pretty much to the way things be were before. That this will have very little impact on some people's lives. But for other people, the, the impact of this is going to be huge. It is going to be that revolutionary moment. Of course, uh, only the time will tell how much this ends up impacting society. Already we know that for those who are most vulnerable to COVID-19, that it really may be a year or more before there is a safe vaccine or medication that is available that allows people who are in vulnerable groups to move freely in society again. And of course, for those who are 
least vulnerable to COVID-19, the opposite is true, that these people are ready and eager to get back to the way things were last year at this time. They are longing for May of 2019. I was thinking a lot this past week and have thought over the last couple of months about how Christians often have longed to go back to the way things used to be. We have this 2,000 year history in our church to look back upon and ponder the changes, good and bad. And of course, there are some things that I never want to go back to. Of course, um, you know, these are different for everyone, but I know that I never want to go back to a period where the sanctuary isn't heated in the wintertime because we want to keep everyone pious enough that they stay awake, especially because the preacher will be preaching one hour or more sermons. Now, if you um, are personally saddened that the preacher never preaches an hour anymore or more than an hour, um, let me know and I can consider working on this. But for the most part, uh, people have adapted pretty well to the 15 or 20 minute sermon and we like our sanctuaries to not freeze. We like to be able to put water into the baptismal fount and not have it ice over. There's some other things that I am personally glad about as well. I'm glad that women are allowed to preach and teach in the church. I believe that God has called me personally to ministry, and I'm glad that I get to preach and teach the gospel to others. Now, I know that not every church and not every denomination sees it that way, but for me, I'm glad that I live in a time and an age where I can work in my life doing God's ministry. There's some other things I'm glad that have changed over the course of years too. I prefer my Bible to be printed in and read in a language that I was brought up with instead of Latin. I am terrible at foreign languages and I'm glad that we are at a point in Christian faith where the texts are made accessible that any person who uh, is able to read and write in their own language, now has access to scripture. Now, of course, what I'm talking about here are all good changes. And certainly we can look back on the life of the church and we can point to things that we wish hadn't changed too. Uh, we miss the days where well, we could assume that the pews would always be full and that there might be a waiting list to get into the choir you know, over time, things shift and things happen. Sometimes they are internal changes and sometimes they are external changes that alter the church or the society around us or both. But things change. And right now we can feel that change happening. What a strange time. Usually it takes decades for us to be able to look back and say, oh yeah, that's when things started to change. That's not this moment. So I want to tell you something. When I was in junior high, I, I went to a town that had a junior high and it wasn't a middle school. It was seventh and eighth grade and there was a uh, mandatory uh, PE. And one year for PE, we got to learn how to play ping pong. And that was a great thing to learn for somebody who is not particularly well coordinated when it comes to a lot of sports. Um, so one year it was ping pong and then another year it was juggling. And I always thought juggling was a pretty ridiculous thing to learn in junior high PE. But it turns out um, that is probably a better life skill than learning something like tennis um, because juggling you can do indoors or outdoors and you can do it by yourself or with a group um, and it takes a lot of energy to, to chase after all of the things that you drop. 
but I'm digressing here. So anyway, when I was in junior high, I had to learn how to juggle and I have forgotten a lot of the skills, but you know, juggling is one of those things that we, um, have this, association with right like so we have juggling right clowns juggle and we see them um and it's a fun cheesy thing to do but we forget that that when we use the word juggling it it really points to a deeper skill that juggling is a way of managing our world whether it's three bean bags in the air or three activities that we are trying to put together all at once. And uh, it takes a little bit of coordination. And when I was thinking about all of the things in the church that has changed, I was thinking about how it is that we are going to manage the changes that come. And we are going to have to learn to juggle. Um, much like seventh graders who are forced into an activity that they don't really want to do, we are going to be forced to juggle things that we never thought we would have to juggle. We're going to have to figure out what it means to be the church in a new way. We're going to have to figure out what it means to have a group that's vulnerable over here and restricted in their movements and activities and a group over here that is uh, not vulnerable, who are able to go out into the world and do things and be active in ways that they are used to being. So we're going to have two different sets of people. And we're going to have sometimes two different sets of people who are living in the same household, some in different households. We are going to have people who want things to be exactly how they were before and other people over here who want things to change. And when we're in the process of doing this, when we are the church, uh, the pastors, the elders, the deacons, the everyday members of the church, the friends of the church who are um, devoted members who don't call themselves members, we are all together going to have to talk about and learn about how it is to be the church in this new time and place. I'm sure you're sick of hearing about all of the changes that COVID-19 are bringing because it's hard. It's hard to think about how we are going to be different when really all we want to do is go back to November of last year when none of this has started yet. I get it. So what do we do? We can't pretend that COVID-19 has not happened. We know for certain that life will change. And we know that as life and society around us changes, that is going to mean that the church has to change too. It might not happen overnight, and it might take a while to figure out what we're doing, but we know it's going to change. And we hope that it'll be a change that is faithful and true to God's gospel. So that's the first thing we know. The second thing that we know is that whatever change happens, Whatever we do next, whatever we decide next, God will not change. Now, some of us want to rush forward and some of us will want to dig in our heels. But we as a church and we as a congregation have a balance to strike. And it's going to require practice and it's going to require dedication and it's going to have some fails that go along with it. But God doesn't change. 
God will not leave us. God will not forsake us. God will not leave us here. I think of that song, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, where in the song it says, with my mouth, I will make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth, I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. That's where we need to be right now. Yes, change is coming. It's going to be hard. We're going to have to struggle with juggling just like seventh graders. But God is faithful to all generations. Generations that, like our generation, have had to flex and change and do things differently. Generations that have long ago turned to dust and generations that have not yet been born. God is faithful to all generations. That song, um, I'll Sing of the Mercies of the Lord Forever, is based off of Psalm 89, where in the NRSV version it says in verses 1 and 2, I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. This is the strength of our covenantal relationship with God. This psalm shows that our relationship with God and our God is steadfast and secure and sure. God cares for God's children in all times and in all places, even, even when we don't know what's going to happen next. Even when we don't know what's happening next, we know that God will be with us. Covenants with God are two-sided. On one side, we have God's faithfulness to us. And on the other side, we have our response to God's faithfulness. And in this, we retain our own faithful response to God. That is, that as much as God is faithful to us, we in turn are called to be faithful to God. And we do that by continuing to do God's work in the world to ensure that people hear the message of Jesus Christ. We care for the downtrodden. We worship with reverence. We teach the gospel. Now, what we do, how we do these things might look different for a while. Or, Perhaps some things may change completely. But in terms of our covenantal relationship with God, that's okay. Because in that covenant with God, in God's steadfast love to us, our response to that steadfast love is to care, to preach, to teach, to love. We have a lot of ways we can do those things. So if the ways that we've done before aren't working, if the ways that we've done things in the past no longer fit, that's okay. Because we can still preach and teach and care and love. Might look different. Might feel different. But we can do those things. We are called to do those things. We can still do those things, even from home, even in front of a computer screen, even in the midst of social distancing. We keep our faith. We keep caring. 
we keep worshiping, we keep teaching, and we rely on God's mercy to show us what's next. It's not easy. We don't have all the answers now. I wish we had the answers now. That would be fantastic. And it's rather hard for me to admit because I like to have the answers. I like to be an answer person. I like to have information at my fingertips. And in situations like this, there aren't easy answers and there aren't quick responses. One of the things I think that this is teaching me is patience that sometimes in the midst of chaos, there's not much we can do but wait. Psalm 89 in a couple of the later verses continues to talk about this back and forth between the covenantal relationship between God's people and God. And at verse 15, it says, happy are the people who know the festal should. Who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and they extol your righteousness. As God's mercy continues for us, so our faithfulness continues for God. We're learning something about human act, interaction in this situation, in this state we find ourselves in. As much as we have complained about or uh, even pushed against some of the technology in our church and in our society, uh, some things have been really clear in the last uh, couple of months. And that is that relationships aren't the same over a computer screen or over a phone or um in other ways that we keep together, like texting. But as much as they're not the same, they can be sustained this way. Perhaps not forever. We hope not forever. But technology can bridge, can bridge this gap for this time when in-person services, in-person conversations, in-person interaction just isn't possible. Friends, we are in a time that we couldn't have pictured. That is hard to imagine what happens next. But we have God's faithfulness. We have this covenant that is from generation to generation, and that includes us. So we preach, we teach, we care, we love, and we wait for God to show us how we can be faithful next. Amen. Our loving God gives us guidance and grace to choose the ways of life that bring us blessing and peace. Therefore, let us also live in ways that bring blessing and peace to others. Join me in our offertory prayer. Holy God, into your hands we give these gifts. Increase them and transform them into abundant goodness. Let us proclaim your presence in the world. Amen.
as we come into our prayer of confession and intercession, we will have a moment of silence between each petition. Let us come now before the Lord. Redeeming God, we bring you our prayers for the world. We pray for the church, both here and around the world. Let it be strengthened in this time of challenge. We pray for the gift of faith. Let us be nurtured in your word. We pray for those who suffer. May your care for them be incarnate in the hands of every doctor, every nurse, every caregiver. We pray for other caregivers, parents, children, those who care at home or at work for the sick, the elderly, the vulnerable. In this moment, instill them with your grace, your mercy, and your compassionate love. We pray for those who are struggling with the storms of life, in relationships, in finances, in work, and in health. May your living word show them comfort and peace. With Christ, in Christ, and in communion with the Holy Spirit, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. as you each go out into the world this week, may you remember that you are God's child who is dearly loved. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.